What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope you guys are having a great hump day. I hope you've been humping around. Wait a minute, that didn't sound right. I hope you're getting over the hump. I hope you're humping. I just hope you're doing something with the hump, because from here on out it goes downhill i was down actually on the red brick house today uh with my brother getting a little bit of framing and some more of the sheathing and stuff done he's not going to be tied up for the next two weeks stuff and i really needed his help but i'm actually going down there this weekend again friday saturday and sunday to do some more work on there uh we're going to actually start doing some of the electrical rough ends and some of the other stuff um we're working actually getting this thing really kicked off we got new windows in and the sheathing it's actually getting a little bit more airtight from where it was it's actually beginning to shake up and if you're interested in that definitely check out my other channel joe boo's day job i just posted another video as it literally changes week by week and surprisingly it's getting really really nice in there all right so guys it is worse than i thought it is worse than i thought um now now keep in mind here for a second we are we're applauding the Cowboys right now because we traded for Stefan Gilmore. Technically, we haven't done anything in free agency. That was a trade. We have not signed any free agents that are of any guilt. Now, we have done some work on the contracts and stuff. We've let go Zeke Elliott. Now, Zeke Elliott, we don't know which route they're going through as far as with the release. There's two ways that they can do it. And actually, let me let me pull this up. With Zeke Elliott, his cap number for this year was $16.7 million. Um, if they just go ahead and just cut him out and out right now and just be done with it, it's $11.8 million in dead money. Still a far cry from the Eagles. The Eagles have got, I don't know, probably like 70-some now that they've ended up having to cut uh, – a uh, big, big, big payday slay, um, and they can grab four point eight million dollars. They say four point eight. Now they could, they could go through and make him a post June first cut. In which case, basically, it's spreading it out over two years. But you can't use the money till after June first. In which case, it would only be a five point eight million dollar cap hit, and then they would have ten point nine million dollars to work with. But you can't use it till June. So you have to literally put it in the bank. Either way, they're going to get close to $5 million or 5 or $10 million, depending on what they do. Um, it's not recorded yet on Sport Track or uh, over the cap. Tyron Smith, we don't have details on his restructuring either. Currently, he is a $17.6 million cap hit. Um, had they just released him post-June 1st, they could have basically had $13.6 million of cap room, um, be it his cap would be spread out over two years. Um, if they had made him a pre-June 1st, they would have got $9.5 million, taking an $8 million uh, cap hit. So I'm, I'm betting what they did was they took half of his salary and they kicked it to the voidable year and um, basically cut it in half. That's my guess. So somewhere we should have a minimum, I would think, of um, $13 million more. And before those moves were made, um, with the Stefan Gilmore move, we had $13.5 million in the bank. So, you know, we should have about 26. Now, here's the thing about Stefan Gilmore. He's on the last year of his deal, okay? And his cap number is $9.9 .9 million. They could go ahead and add like two years to his contract and reduce his number if they want to try and get some more money, if they believe that he's not going to be just a one-hit wonder. I mean, it's possible. It's possible. You know, so the Cowboys have some ways of getting some money. Now, you may be upset about Zeke Elliott being released, okay? You probably feel some kind of a way. Um, don't cry for me, Argentina. Zeke will be okay. 
Zeke will be okay. He'll probably sign with some team, you know, and, and, and play well and so on. Maybe he goes on a team where, you know, he's one of the guys that get to a Super Bowl and he wins a Super Bowl. But here's something that's kind of crazy, and this is where you want to look at and say, the Joneses screwed the pooch. Zeke Elliott's career earnings. This is how much money Zeke Elliott, because we always talk about that Dak Prescott's money, right? Now, what do we say about running backs? Running backs don't get paid unless they're Zeke Elliott. So check this out. Zeke Elliott has made in his career $70.6 million. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, the way he's had to stick his nose in things and all that, you couldn't pay me enough to do the stuff that he's done. Getting tackled by 300-plus guys there, you know, getting the crap beat out of him. You know, to me, he earned every single penny of it. However, however, he earned $70.6 million in career earnings, the most for any running back in the NFL since his rookie season in 2016. So if you take all of the running backs that have been here 2016 and on, right? He made $70 million. The next closest, get this, Christian McCaffrey, $45 million. What? Zeke Elliott has made $25 million more thus far in his career than Christian McCaffrey. Derrick Henry is third at $43.9 million. So Zeke, by far and away, remember when, remember when Catboy said, you know, we don't want to reset the market? You know, we're not going to reset the market with Zeke Elliott. You did. You not only reset it, you blew the mother humper out the water. And that's my, maybe one of the reasons why when you look around and say, well, you know, when you pay, you know, a premier quarterback, Jerry Jones needs to add, well, when you pay a premier running back more than anybody else, by far and away more than anybody else, it's hard to put talent around your quarterback. Let, let's be clear here. And so understanding that it, it's not Zeke Elliott's fault. It's the Cowboys' fault. They're the ones that made the deal. At some point, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. You know? And don't count your money. <laughs> don't, don't count your money while you're sitting at the table either because there'll be time enough for counting when the deal is done. Okay? So, yeah. That is that's a lot of money. Shout out to Ed Warder who uh, posted that on Twitter. Uh, his source was Roster Management System. So understanding that you paid your quarterback, you paid D Law, you know he got ninety some million too, and you paid your quarterback. It is hard to put other players around there. It is. Oh, not to mention Jalen Smith's contract. How crazy that was! And then we still had the holdover of like the Tyrone Crawford ones. But here's where it gets to be crazy because I'm sitting here hoping that the Cowboys don't make the same mistake, okay? They've teased us. Now, I don't know if Stephon Gilmore is the big move. I don't know if that's the big move. That's a great move, but I don't know that that's a big move. I'm hoping that they're looking at actually bringing in a receiver because – when I actually went back through and I looked at, I wanted to look at our roster of guys because, you know, if we had great receivers, they would be doing great elsewhere. So, you know, we had brought in, for one example, the Cowboys always go to the scratch and dent pile. We brought in Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb, who had been a standout receiver under Aaron Rodgers, you know, the bad man who's just got a bad attitude and is going to take it to New York, New York. When you looked at what he did, I think 2014 or 2015, he was great, and then he just went downhill. He had gotten so he couldn't stay healthy. Um, his seasons, his numbers were just going down like crazy. And then he came to the Cowboys, and he rejuvenated his career. Had we not had 
uh, there were three plays that he had were touchdowns that were called back because of dumbass penalties. Some of the ones you kind of look with a side eye and say, really, ref? He had like 850 yards. He was back where he was with Aaron Rodgers. In fact, having more yards per completion than he had at any other point in his career. So good was he that he got a two-year, $25 million deal to go to the Texans and went back to being the Randall Cobb that was, you know, last year's in Green Bay. Of course, Aaron Rodgers, it's his buddy, won him back in Green Bay, and still he was like the mm-hmm. Randall Cobb that was in the last years of Green Bay. And he wants him, of course, to go to uh, New York, which is cool. So that was actually one of the premier signings that the Cowboys had at receiver. Now, we've drafted a few guys. You know, we've had our Terrence Williams that, you know, were, were, were serviceable. We've had CD, who's been really, really good. You know, he's not like, you know, receivers that uh, the Eagles draft typically. You know, he's a lot better. You know, the Eagles fire sale their guys and get rid of them. But we'll see what happens with uh, Devontae Smith. Um, you know, it's still, st- it's still out. The jury's still out on that one. He, he's good, but he's not, you know, all that in the hamstring. He's not CD Lamb. But going into training camp, after the Cowboys decided we don't need Amari Cooper and Cedric Wilson, who actually had like 700 some yards, he was actually very, very productive. Unfortunately, he got caught in Miami in a numbers game and never hit the field because they got Tariq Hill. But this is the training camp roster. And I forgot how bad this was. Now, the premier player, of course, CeeDee Lamb. Healthy going into training camp. Yeah, okay. Although we still had questions on whether or not he was going to be a number one because he's going to go into his third year. Most experienced guy we had. We had Michael Gallup, who was on the bands through all of training camp, and we knew he was not going to be ready to start anytime soon. Your second most experienced receiver, who wasn't going to be ready. They signed James Washington, and James Washington, let me, I want to make sure I get it right. James Washington was your third most experienced receiver who had played for the Steelers for four years and had 1,600 yards. So when you looked at what he had done, his rookie year he had 16 catches for 217 yards. 2019 was his best year. He had 44 catches for 735, which is about what Cedric Wilson did the year before. The next year it was 30 catches for 392 yards. And 2021, 24 catches for 285 yards. Not exactly a premier receiver. He was your third most productive player, and he was hurt in OTAs and hurt immediately at the beginning of training camp. And Michael Gallup was on bands. After we got past CeeDee Lamb, this is the roster that we had in training camp. Semi Fioco, who going to training camp had three catches and 24 yards. Three catches and 24 yards. He's still on the roster. Dennis Houston, undrafted rookie free agent. Jalen Tolbert. Third round pick. We were told, you know, that Jalen Tolbert, he going he to be real good. He going to be a starter. And he, they sold us on him being a day one starter. I hope that he's going to be better in the new system, that after being a rookie and stuff, that he'll get, you know, his, you know, he, his eyes won't be wide open. He'll be in better shape to actually play. Noah Brown, believe it or not, after James Washington literally got hurt and couldn't practice, and Michael Gallup, of course, was on the bands recovering from ACL. Do you realize that Noah Brown was our second most experienced wide receiver to start the season? Noah Brown, going into the season, had 425 yards. We had Jarilly Robinson. I probably mispronounced his name. Ty Fry Fogel. Don't know who that was. TJ Vasher. He was the real tall guy. He had the one catch. And, and this, this, see, and, and here's half the problem. Guys like me, you know, guys like uh, Law Nation and everything else, 
We see it was a one-handed catch. I think it was. I think it was Vasher. In the corner of the end zone. We're like, oh my God, we got Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, did you see that catch? Didn't make the roster. Dontario Drummond and Brandon Smith. Guys, that was our wide receiver core. Collectively, collectively, now I don't know if you want to count James Washington and Michael Gallup, but with CD's numbers and everybody else, I I mean, CD had going into that year probably 2,000 yards. You did not have, starting the season without James Washington and Michael Gallup, 3,000 yards worth of catches. And I want to say that other than CD Lamb, Nobody had ever caught a touchdown pass. So as we sit here and, you know, question our quarterback, question our quarterback and say, you know, Dak sucks. Dak sucks. You know, you know Dak, Dak is, he, you know, he, he's holding on to the ball too long. He, he's throw, you know, he, he's throwing, he's throwing in them tight windows. Of course he's holding the ball too long. These guys ain't getting open. They don't know shit. Of course, he's throwing in tight windows. They couldn't get separation. Are you telling me that this shit doesn't matter? And as we sit here on the precipice of another season, right now, you've got CeeDee Lamb, who is everything that you want last year. Hopefully, Michael Gallup (coughs) recovering from the ACL. You better pray that he is because we just restructured his contract and kicked it more down the road. But that's it. Even you're one of your most experienced guys, Noah Brown, who now has 800 yards to his name. He's gone to the Texans. And I don't know if you bring back T.Y. Hilton, who's 33 years old. You cannot expect Dak or really any quarterback, if that's all you got to work with, if that's all you got to work with, while you see other teams coveting wide receivers and saying, we need weapons, we cannot, we cannot repeat this. So we know that the Cowboys thus far, there's not a lot of great free agent wide receivers out there. Okay, Juju just signed, I believe, with was it New England. You got Odell, who's looking to get 20 he's not i don't think he's worth 20 i'm not sure i want him and you've got adam thielen who i wouldn't i I think i'd rather have adam thielen than than maybe odell i think you're going to have a better locker room with adam thielen but you know some people say that he spent but you know he still had 700 some odd yards last year he could be a decent receiver or then you have Jerry Judy, who's still on his rookie contract, whose price is kind of low, but Jerry Judy didn't have a great season last year. But then again, the whole offense was trash with Russell Wilson, which is hard to believe. And then there's Hopkins out there who you can probably get for a decent um, trade pick, maybe a third or a second. I, I don't mind giving up a second because our second's – we always mess them up anyway. If we can, if you're telling me uh, for our second-round pick we get DeAndre Hopkins and he's healthy, not coming off the ACL, I'm going to say that's better than most of our second-round picks other than uh, Trayvon Diggs. Just them. Just them. Um, but the Cowboys have to, have to do better at wide receiver. If they don't trade for one of these guys, they must use it on a wide receiver. The only problem with that is at 26, the top probably three will already be gone. And the Cowboys like to draft one of the best players at a position. Wide receivers, quarterbacks, uh, edge rushers, left tackles, you're going to have three or four of each of those positions taken up before you get there. Just are. So, Cowboys, are you going to do something in free agency? Or is it just going to be the trade route? 
I appreciate each and every one of you guys, as well as you ladies, and I will see you soon. Peace.